Calculate number eight, evaluate the integral. Sine base to power five x dx. So as we say, you cannot integrate it when it's raised to power five. Use the Moivre's theorem, isn't it? And then the Moivre's theorem, what did we say? When you have two cos n x, that is z n plus one over z n, isn't it? If you have two j sine n x, that is z n minus one over z n. So here we have sine x, meaning when n is one. It is the same as 2j sine x, where the same you put 1. So you get 2j sine x is z minus 1 over, where the same if you substitute with 1, you get 2j sine x is z minus 1 over z, isn't it? So here we now have 2j sine x to be equals to z minus 1 over z. So we want sine raised to power 5, meaning we raise both sides of the equation to power. To power 5. So 2 raised to power 5 is 30. 32, isn't it? J raised to power 5 is, is J. Because J raised to power 5 is equal to J raised to power 4 times J. J raised to power 4 is 1, isn't it? Times J you get J. J. Then you go to sine x raised to power 5 is is sine raised to power 5x, isn't it? Are we together? Then on the other side of the equation is a binomial expansion, isn't it? Yes. When you have power 5, it means there are how many terms? Six. Six terms. So that one is the first term plus the second term plus the third term plus the fourth term plus the fifth term plus the sixth term, not the last term, isn't it? So you put the coefficients of power 5, isn't it? What are the coefficients of power 5? You can start with anything even with, the, with what is inside. The first term here is z, isn't it? So you put z for the first bracket. The first term is z. The second term here is negative 1 over z, isn't it? Negative 1 over z, negative 1 over z, negative 1 over z, negative 1 over z, negative 1 over z. Put the powers, one power sets, one descend. So to take this one to one, you make it power set, isn't it? Power zero, power one, power two, power three, power four, power five. Then this other power descends. Now start from five, four, three, two, one, zero. So give me the coefficient of power five. That is five combination zero is one, isn't it? 5 combination 1 is 5. 5 combination 2? What is 5 combination 2? 10. Ten. Ten. Then 5 combination 3? 10. 5 combination 4? Five. 5. Then 5 combination 5, 1. Isn't it? Then we, we simplify. We simplify. So anything raised to power 0 is 1, isn't it? So this one is raised to power 0, it means it is 1. This other one is raised to power 0, it implies it is 1, isn't it? So at the end, can you simplify? The ones with the same coefficient, this side we have 32j side raised to power 5x, the ones with the same coefficient are the same. So the ones with coefficient of 1, you put them together. This is z raised to power 5. So it means we've collected this. And this one is also having a coefficient of 1. So here we have negative 1 raised to power 5 is negative, isn't it? It's negative. 1, then z raised to power 5 is z raised to power 5. So you've joined this term and that, isn't it? Move to the next one. The ones with coefficient of 5 together, isn't it? You put the ones with coefficient of 5 together. So look at this one. This is z raised to power 4, negative 1. Raised to power 1 is negative, isn't it? So it means we have negative 5. You factorize negative 5 outside. Because you know the coefficient of z is not negative. The z that should not have coefficient, isn't it? So you factorize out negative 5 outside. So z raised to power 4 divided by z raised to power 1, you remain with z raised to power 3, isn't it? 
go to the other one, it shares, it is the same, this is coefficient of 5, this is also coefficient of 5. So this is negative raised to power 4 is positive, isn't it? So z raised to power 1 divided by z raised to power 4, you still get the same z raised to power 3, isn't it? That is together. So there we have minus 1 over z raised to power 3, because negative into negative gives you back the positive, which is there, isn't it? Are we together? Because negative raised to power 4 is positive, so negative into negative get back the positive sign. You join them together, isn't it? Move to the next one. Coefficient of 10, isn't it? The coefficient of 10, negative squared is positive, meaning you factorize out positive 10, isn't it? You factorize out positive 10, because negative squared is positive, isn't it? So what do you remain with? Z raised to power 3 divided by Z raised to power 2? Z, isn't it? Join it with the one with the same coefficient is this, isn't it? Z raised to negative, negative raised to power 3 is negative, isn't it? So it means there, there we remain with negative 1 over z because z squared divided by z cube is 1 over z. So positive into negative just remain with your negative there, isn't it? Are we together? So from there you simplify. What do we have? z raised to power 5 minus 1 over z raised to power 5 is it means when n is 5, isn't it? When n is 5, is z raised to power 5 minus 1 over z raised to power 5. So you get 2j sine 5 x, isn't it? So it means this one is the same as 2. The whole of this is the same as 2j sine 5 x. z raised to power 3 minus 1 over z raised to power 3 when n is 3. Where there is n, if you put 3, you get 2j sine 3. 3x. So it means the whole of this is 2j sine 3x, isn't it? Z minus 1 over z, of course it is what you found here. 2j sine, this is 2j sine x. Sine x, isn't it? So what is the next step? The next step is to get sine raised to power 5x, isn't it? Meaning we divide by 32, 32j, 32 isn't it? We divide all through by 32 by 32j divided on through by 32j. So what do you get? This goes with this, you get sine sine raised to power 5x is equals to of course j will go with j. J goes with j, j goes with j, isn't it? So you get 2 divided by 32 is 1 over 1 over 16 times sine 5x, isn't it? Then 5 times 2 is 10. 10 divided by 32, you get, here we have minus here side, 10 divided by 32, 5 over 16, then we have sine 3, x, isn't it? 10 times 2 is 20, 20 divided by 32, 5 over 8, isn't it? 5 over 8 sine, sine x. So it means, where there is sine raised to power 5x, we are going to substitute with this. This is its value, isn't it? Are we together there? So it means, when you now do this, so you see, you have this, it's supposed to be this, meaning if you introduce the integral on both sides, then you introduce dx on both sides. So it means the integral of sine raised to power 5x dx is the same as the integral of the whole of that. So you can now integrate it because there are no powers, isn't it? Are you clear there? You can now integrate it. So what do you have? This one is equals to 1 over 16. If you integrate, 1 over 16 is a constant. If you integrate sine raised to 5x, you get negative cos. If you integrate sine, isn't it? You have negative cos 5x, then you divide by the constant of the inner function 5, isn't it? Then here we have minus you are done with that term. Then we have minus 5 over 60, then in bracket you are integrating sine 3x, isn't it? If you integrate sine 3x, you get negative cos 3x over the, the, the constant of the inner function. Meaning that if you differentiate the inner function, you should get a constant. You divide it in that constant, isn't it? Then plus 5 over 8 is a constant, then you integrate sine x, isn't it? If you integrate sine x, you get 
Then the cost and if you differentiate in a function you get, then at the end of integration you, you add, you add your arbitrary integration constant, isn't it? Are we together there? So from there, if you simplify that, what do you got? If you simplify that, you have simplify this is equal to negative one over eight, isn't it? Cos five x. That is why negative in here is positive. Positive five over forty eight. 48 cos 3x, then if negative into positive is negative, then negative 5 over 8 cos x plus plus c. And you would have integrated that function, isn't it? So that is how to deal with such kind of